For decades, the Boeing F-A-18 Super Hornet fighter jet has been a staple in the skies for the air defense forces of the United States and some of its allies. But after serving those nations brilliantly for all those years, the wear and tear accumulated during its operation has meant that some countries have been contemplating replacing their fleet. Recent upgrades to the F-A-18s are turning the tide, promising significant improvements in performance and lifespan. Given escalating geopolitical tensions, nations may clamor for the new F-18 Super Hornet. Here's why. First things first, the Boeing F-A-18 Super Hornet is an American supersonic twin engine, carrier-capable fighter aircraft with the ability to deliver cutting-edge, next-generation, multi-role strike fighter capabilities. These capabilities afford operational commanders greater flexibility in deploying tactical aircraft within dynamic battle scenarios. The aircraft can serve as an escort and fleet air defense, while also offering force projection and deep air support. But before we get into why nations are going to queue up for an F-A-18 Super Hornet, we need to first go back in time to just before the aircraft took to the skies for the first time. The Super Hornet is a redesign of the F-A-18 Hornet aircraft, which was produced by McDonnell Douglas and Northrop for about 23 years, starting in 1974 and introduced in January 1983. It was eventually produced by Boeing from 1997 after it merged with McDonnell Douglas. The F-A-18 Hornet was the first tactical airframe designed to perform both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. And according to Boeing, it was also the first fighter to use digital fly-by-wire flight controls, as well as the first to feature carbon fiber wings. Additionally, the F-A-18 Hornet originated from the redesign of another aircraft, the Northrop YF-17. This development was driven by the US Navy's need for a multi-role fighter to complement the larger and costlier Grumman F-14 Tomcat, which served as the primary air superiority fighter and fleet defense interceptor for the US Navy. However, by 1989, the US Defense Ministry had felt that the technology on the F-14 was outdated and began to cut back on acquisitions before eventually cancelling production of the aircraft in 1991. This time, in favor of producing more of the redesigned F-A-18 Hornet aircraft. In 1992, the updated F-A-18 aircraft, which was now nicknamed the Super Hornet, received its first order from the US Navy. It was still quite similar, however, to the original Hornet in terms of avionics, radar, armament, maintenance procedures and so on. And in November 1995, the aircraft took to the skies for the first time. However, it was only approved by the US Navy in February 2000, following extensive tests and evaluations. Now that we know a bit of its history, let's take a look inside the F-A-18 Super Hornet and see what it's capable of. The F-A-18 Super Hornet was an upgrade over the already impressive F-A-18 Hornet, and this was reflected in its spec sheet. Just like its predecessor, the Super Hornet exists in two variants, the F-A-18E and the F-A-18F, with the 18E being the single-seat model and the 18F being the double-seat model with an extra seat for a weapon systems officer. But compared to its predecessor, the Super Hornet has 42% fewer structural parts. The F-A-18 is about 60 feet long and 16 feet high, with a wingspan of nearly 45 feet. It also has a maximum takeoff weight of around 30 tons and is powered by two General Electric F414400 turbofan engines with 58 kilonewtons of dry thrust and 98 kilonewtons of thrust with an afterburner. In terms of performance, the Super Hornet is pretty quick with a maximum speed of an impressive Mach 1.6 or almost 1,200 miles per hour at an altitude of 40,000 feet. Its range isn't too impressive at around 1,275 nautical miles and its ferry range is a bit higher at 1,800 nautical miles. The FA-18's combat range is also just around a fourth of its ferry range at between 444 to 489 nautical miles depending on the number of 480 gallon drop tanks on board or the type of mission. For example, for a fighter escort mission, its combat range is 462 nautical miles. 
the FA-18 Super Hornet is also equipped with a single 412 round M61A2 Vulcan gun, 11 hard points with a maximum payload capacity of just over 8 tons, with provisions to carry various combinations of air-to-air, air-to-ground and anti-ship missiles. Bombs, such as cluster bombs, laser-guided bombs and mines, as well as other decoy and surveillance systems such as the AN-AAQ-28V lightning targeting pods. The Super Hornet's upgraded avionics also include the Hughes APG-73 or Raytheon APG-79 radar, the Raytheon AN or ALR-67V3 AESA radar warning receiver, the Mid-S Datalink transceiver and more. As an upgrade over the original Hornet, the first batch of Super Hornets were also called the Block II Super Hornets to signify their upgraded configurations such as the aforementioned Acer radar, avionics improvements and larger displays. It is reported that a single Super Hornet goes for around $67 million. However, this figure can go as high as $125 million depending on the variant, with the EA-18G Growler variant reportedly within that range as it offers a bit more compared to other variants. In essence, all FA-18s incorporate full mission spectrum capabilities from air superiority to reconnaissance to fighter escort and close air support amongst other attributes that are too many to list here, if I'm honest. So, with the FA-18 Super Hornet's multi-role capabilities, the Navy was able to cut down on the amount of aircraft needed to perform similar roles in the past as it could do all of their jobs. In fact, during the Vietnam War, the Navy usually required up to six different aircraft to perform the duties only a single Super Hornet can perform. It was reported that hundreds of millions of dollars were potentially saved annually due to the replacement of all the other aircraft for a single FA-18 Super Hornet. The FA-18 Super Hornet has been developed with the ability to incorporate new systems and technologies to help combat emerging threats. And over the years, Boeing has continued to upgrade the FA-18 Super Hornets and designate these upgrades into blocks. The latest installation of upgrades to the FA-18 is called the Block 3, and it was reported to have had its first delivery in 2021 with a contract for the upgrades for 78 aircraft. And the new batch of upgrades has been leaving air defense ministries across the world scrambling to get an FA-18 Super Hornet or keep a hold of theirs for longer. So what exactly are these upgrades? According to Boeing, the FA-18 Block 3 Super Hornet exceeds fourth-generation strike fighter capabilities and makes use of a new adjunct processor and more advanced touchscreen cockpit display which would allow it to do more work in far less time, which would increase the situational awareness of its pilots. The Block 3 fighters are expected to be able to clock an additional 4,000 flight hours for a total of around 10,000 flight hours which is almost double what similar jets can achieve. Added to that, they would be able to carry more fuel than predecessors and would make use of a smaller radar cross-section which would help minimize the airframe's detectability. Boeing initially intended to continue producing new Super Hornets into the 2030s, but eventually decided to cease production in 2025 following the delivery of the last aircraft. However, the reliable Super Hornets are expected to continue operations till at least the mid-2030s with a sixth-generation fighter replacement called the FAXX, geared for development in the coming years. Boeing has already released a concept for the aircraft, saying it will be designed for anti-access area denied or A2AD operations. It has been reported that Boeing will next shift its focus to developing the latest fourth-generation F-15X air superiority fighter, with interest in the aircraft arising from countries such as Indonesia and Israel, as well as orders received from the US Air Force. But back to the FA-18 Super Hornet. As its service life is being extended by the Block 3 upgrades, what are its prospects and how it has affected its operators so far? As of today, the FA-18 is being operated by the Air Force of the United States, as well as Kuwait, Canada, Finland, Malaysia, Switzerland, Spain and the Royal Australian Air Force. Therefore, the Block 3 upgrades have been vital to keeping the aircraft in all their fleets. 
For instance, the Royal Australian Air Force last year cast doubts on the orders they made for the more modern Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning Multirole Combat Aircraft. They will instead continue to fly their F-A-18 Super Hornets until the mid-2030s and are looking forward to receiving all the Block 3 upgrades. The F-35 Lightning would have provided steep competition to the F-A-18 Super Hornets, but the program currently suffers from ongoing software upgrade issues, which has led to delays and a decline in expected production numbers. The Pentagon has even claimed that it won't accept new F-35s until those upgrades are fully ready. Furthermore, the Pratt & Whitney Engine Corps upgrades are planned for all current and future F-35s, although their implementation may require a significant amount of time and could potentially cause further delays in aircraft deliveries. So it looks like the F-A-18's biggest competition is facing some huge problems right now. But it's not quite home free yet as there could be a new threat in the form of the Chengdu J-20 Mighty Dragon Stealth Fighter, an imposing name. It was built for the Chinese People's Liberation Army. With geopolitical tensions between China and the US heating up, China has ramped up production for various military aircraft including the Chengdu J-20 which, reports claim, will have 120 units produced this year alone, matching the numbers for the F-35. The Chengdu J-20 is designed as an air superiority fighter with precision strike capabilities and would ideally come up against the F-35 Lightning or F-22 Raptor. But with the Royal Australian Air Force as allies to the United States, they may have to make use of their Block 3 Super Hornets if the need arises due to their importance in securing the balance of power in the Pacific region. The F-A-18 has played a vital role in securing the skies of many nations scattered across the globe, but it is expected to play an even more vital role in the coming years as globalization continues to come under threat. The aircraft should remain the backbone of naval aviation strike warfare for not just the US, but the eight other countries operating it well into the 21st century. And who knows, with the Block 3 upgrades, Maybe a few more countries will join them. But what do you think? Will more countries ask for the new FA-18 Super Hornet upgrade, or would they just wait it out for newer fighter jets? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, take care.